Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we get stuck into the ignition system on the engine. All right, so before I get started today, I just wanted to uh, talk a bit about a project I've been working on in the background with actually one of the, the viewers here. Rainier is a viewer from the Netherlands who actually reached out to me, and we've been working together for a few weeks now on this site in the background, Porsche Parts by Jeff. And basically what it is, is it's a comparison site and it's got a bunch of different parts shops that you can just go in there and search and get some price comparisons online of whatever you're looking for. It's really handy, instead of shopping around everywhere, like most comparison sites you've looked at, this is a Porsche parts specific site that you can actually find what you're looking for. It makes things really easy. It, uh, we're not actually selling anything ourselves, it's just uh, you click on the uh, part you're interested in and it takes you through to the retailer site, they'll, you know, they'll sell it to you and all the rest, but at least you can see, oh, I can get it for $100 cheaper from here. It's, it's quite a handy little thing. We're going to be adding more uh, interaction moving forward, so there'll be uh, places where you can have a bit of a discord, you can uh, talk about things and, and talk about parts or whatever you like on there. And also, uh, we're, we're looking for input from you guys. If you guys can get on there, have a look, see what you think, if you like it, if you don't like it, let us know in the comments. If there's um, other places, other shops and stuff that you uh, think that we've missed that we uh, we can add to the site. Uh, we've got quite a few already, but uh, yeah, just uh, let us know in the comments and we'll add them on. And if you're a site yourself and wanna be uh, featured on there, go through and we'll be having things like uh, sales and, um, promos and things like that that you should be able to get through the site uh, moving forward. So I think it's a really good resource, fantastic way to be able to source some of the uh, the bits on these engines which have often been spread out and there's been lots of retailers all over the place doing different things or different specific parts uh, and it's a great way to track them down. So uh, PorschePartsByJeff.com, get on there, have a look. All right, now getting into today's episode, um, we are finally tackling the ignition system on this car. And these engines, particularly with the, the, the big domed head uh, that they have on these engines, really suffer from lack of spark. And as he said many times, one of the best upgrades you can do on a uh, standard car is a, a good big CDI box, like something from Classic Retrofit, they do a really good um, beefy CDI box, and that will get a much bigger spark, and the bigger the spark, um, there's there's potentially uh, you know quite a lot of horsepower there that's left on the table just by the factory ignition system. In my case, I can't go a CDI box because I am going complete EFI, which means no distributor, I'm getting rid of the distributor, so it's uh, obviously more controllable. Before I get deep into this engine, um, I went down, I ordered some spark plugs through Super Cheap, and they've uh, sorted me out some Iridium plugs, so let's go through and install the plugs. And there was one in particular that's uh, gonna be a little bit more troublesome, but let's get them all in there, and, um, and then we can move forward and show you what I'm gonna have to do to get that other one in. So I mentioned in an earlier episode that um, the, the casing, it looks like they're actually designed to have twin plug, but they also have this casting on them here that's just capped off. And to get the spark plug in, Neil's already cut out the, uh, the lower valve cover, but uh, this part here I need to cut off. So what I'm gonna do, I've already got a, um, there's a, there's a plug loosely in the hole down the bottom there. Um, I've stuffed in some uh, some rag. I'm gonna stuff in some more rag. I'll probably um, soak it in oil so that uh, any shavings and stuff sort of stick to the rag rather than being just dust that flies around. And I'm going to cut carefully, cut this off, just with an angle grinder. So uh, fingers crossed, I can cut it off nice and neatly. And then we have access to spark plug holes. So as I started uh, alluding to earlier, we're gonna talk about the ignition system I'm gonna be using on this uh, engine moving forward. One of the things, as I said, is that they need a really big spark. And it's 
you can't compare it to modern engines. I had some people saying, uh, oh, these coil packs will be fine. They're good for a thousand horsepower on an Evo. But that's a completely different engine, completely different uh, combustion chamber, and it doesn't, uh, it, they generally have a, a much smaller dome. They have a center mounted spark plug and they get much better um, spark coverage from that. Whereas these engines don't. And that is why you really need to get as much spark as possible. And the best thing possible really is a CDI unit because uh, with a good CDI unit, you can get sort of, uh, you can boost these up to sort of 115 to 150 even millijoules uh, of power per, per spark, which is heaps. Um, and that really helps uh, burning everything and getting the most power out of your engine. Um, standard uh, coils, like uh, a lot of people like to use LS um, engine coils, those, those only make about 30 millijoules of um, power. There's actually a really good uh, comparison video on uh, Motive DVD who did some comparisons on a bunch of the popular uh, ignition coils and the best one that uh, you can get is a is quite a large large individual units, um, and that's the IGM 1A, and they make just over 102 millijoules, uh, which is which is heaps from an ignition coil pack, but they're quite large. In my case, to get the most out of them, I'd need 12 of them. Uh, they're big. They're not coil on plug. They're individual coils. I'd have to mount. They need. They have heat sinks, so that they uh, they get quite hot. Uh, there's a quite a lot of infrastructure that goes in and I just don't have the room in the engine bay and uh, and they're quite expensive uh, that all goes towards it and you also need um, leads going off of them they're not a coil on plug system so I opted away from them the best coils um, that uh, at least that I've discovered and uh, from these tests on the market are the uh, the Nissan R35 GTR coils, or they're actually the same coils on the Nissan 370Z. Um, I mentioned this to Raceworks. Raceworks were good enough to send me out uh, the uh, uh, one of each. They sent me out the uh, R35 coil and the uh, 370Z coil, and I found that the uh, these are here, the, uh, the genuine Hitachi 370Z coils, are the right length for what I need to fit coil and plug the only difference between this and the R35 is the R35 is slightly shorter. Um, this fits nicely coil on plug onto my um, engine. So I am using the uh, 370Z coils. And as I said, Raceworks were fantastic. They sent me out all of the Hitachi coils. So a big thank you to Raceworks. Um, so these are the all 370Z coils. They make an output of about 52 millijoules, which is still Nowhere near as much as a CDI unit, but as I've got rid of my distributor and uh, I'm running this full EFI setup, that's the way I'm going. It's not as good as what it could be, but I do have twin sparks, so hopefully that uh, balances a bit. But there is definitely potential for um, power left on the table. But I'm confident these will work quite well. So uh, now it's time to work out how to fit these. So one of the things with these R35 coil packs uh, getting them to fit a regular spark plug is the uh, the end is too tight and the way you do it is you take the rubber part off the end and there are um, rubber ends that you can get for these things that will fit regular spark plugs but you can actually just modify this one for nothing uh, and uh, and it will do the job all you do is you turn it inside out or turn the outer lip inside out like so and then grab a pair of scissors and cut the inner bit off. And that just uh, gives enough room, enough room to stretch over the top of the, uh, the regular spark plugs and they go on quite easily. So um, I'm gonna go through now and fit these up to these uh, core packs and um, install them in the car. And to hold the core packs in, I just got some of these um, the RSR spark plug clips. Apparently these were originally designed for RSR cars that were twin plug to hold in the spark plug leads on the, uh, the lower set of spark plugs. I'm just using these to, uh, they just bolt to the rocker cover and they've got a little rubber cap on it. Just bend them to the exact right shape I need and bolt them down and they will hold in my um, core packs. So let's go through and do all 12.
so uh, the coil patch all mounted. I'm actually quite happy with how they turned out. They look quite neat and tidy. I did have to do some die grinding to clearance the, um, to basically give enough space on this lower uh, cam cover. They're uh, mounted and they look good. Wiring and stuff will be done at a later stage when I start wiring in the ECU. But uh, moving on now, I need to start tackling the, uh, the fan. All right, so my alternator, I actually, I haven't, gone and rebuilt it i just um it spins quite freely the bearings feel quite good and quite solid i have just pulled off the uh the back and checked the brushes you can see that they're quite worn down uh particularly this one it's worn worn down quite a bit so i'll order some new brushes for this and uh, uh and and the rest hopefully should be reasonably good so i'll uh they're easy enough to replace once it's on the engine. It's actually right just on the back of the, the fan, so it's not that hard to get to. I need to reassemble the center into the fan, and then I need to press this onto the shaft of the alternator because this is actually the face of the alternator. That was a lot more headache putting this together than I hoped for, but it now spins nicely. It doesn't scrape on the edges, which is something I was uh, slightly cautious about because of the fact that uh, it's very tight and because I painted it, it's added thickness, but uh, it doesn't touch. So that is a very good thing. And it spins nice and freely. It's, uh, it's good. So now it is time to mount it onto the engine, which it goes about here somewhere. So before I install this, I have to uh, install the fan strap. I sent this away, or actually Neil sent it away to get CAD plated. So uh, it's looking all nice and shiny. Uh, I'll feed this through and then we'll see if we can mount up a fan. So the next fun part is going to be going through this old uh, mess of a wiring loom and working out what I do need and what I don't need. There's a lot of stuff that I don't need because I'm not using the CIS, I'm not using an ignition coil, there's a whole bunch of things that I'm not using, but there are things that I am using. Uh, a bunch of the sensors and stuff I still want to connect up so they go through and still work and dash the car and uh, the alternator and the starter motor and things like that are still going to be wired up basically the way they were. So I'm probably going to strip this whole wiring loom down and keep the bits I want to keep and get rid of the bits I don't. And, uh, and then I also have to intermix the, um, the loom to cover the uh, injectors, which I'm yet to add, and all of these core packs. So this is going to be a bit of a mess, but uh, I might just start trying to plug things in now just so I work out what goes where and have a little bit of an idea of what's going on with this, uh, with this mess. All right, it's uh, funny going through and reading some of the, uh, the, the little things I wrote on for, the, for each wire. They make sense to me now, but I had no idea what I was doing when I was pulling this apart. And like, this is like, uh, this says knock sensor thing for the, uh, <laughs> for the um, oil pressure sensor and uh, yeah, these little temperature sensors and stuff like that. But I know where they are. I've got most of it laid out, so I can, I've sort of got a rough idea of how I'm going to put it back together, which is quite good. But I can actually, I'll go through in another episode stripping that all down and getting it all ready. But the fact that um, we're actually we're actually looking more like an engine now, which is which is really good. Um, the reason why I'm keeping going on this, I need to get the uh, get the tins on basically, so I can work out how to line up and build my heat exchangers for my exhaust. So um, I'm pretty sure that's what I'll be tackling in the next episode. That should be uh, should be interesting. So um, 
All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, as I mentioned before, Porsche Parts by Jeff.com. Go down. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Go and have a look. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Uh, I'm, I'm really uh, dying to see what you guys think about that. So, uh, and, uh, and let me know in the description what, you, what, your, uh, what your thoughts are. All right. Um, as always, Patreon really helps us out. Uh, watch the videos a day early. Facebook, Instagram, all homebook by Jeff. All right, guys. See you next time.